Hello, this is Nectarios from Celestial Textures and today we're going to talk about Euclidean sequences and uh, how they can be used in a creative way in the context of uh, electronic dance music. The basic principle behind Euclidean sequences is using the algorithm that the Greek mathematician Euclid came up with and it involves using the greatest common divisor between two numbers and placing triggers within a sequence as evenly as possible. There are three main parameters that we need to pay attention to when creating Euclidean sequences. And those three parameters are the step length of the sequence. In this example, I'm mean, using Euclidean circles and all blue lights are lit. So each of the three channels has a 16 step sequence enabled. And within these 16 steps, I can uh, place triggers every time I turn the knob uh, clockwise right there. It's uh, lit orange, so when I turn it clockwise once, there's one trigger placed. Turn it again, there's a second trigger placed. And if you pay attention, it's placed on step 9. So step 1 and step 9 within a 16-step sequence. That was channel 1 that was triggering the uh, bass tom sound. Channel 2 in Euclidean circles is triggering drips, which is making this uh, high-pitched bell-like tone. And channel 3 of Euclidean circles is triggering a snare sound from microbraids. Please excuse me, I've got a lead step 15 on channel 3 on Euclidean circles that's burnt. So these are the three channels and the Euclidean circles uses three push knobs and depending on the color of each lead, each knob performs a different function when it's turned uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. When the light is orange, it adds triggers. When the light is blue, you can address the number of steps for each sequence. And when the LED is purple, you can offset the sequence forwards or backwards. So let's start programming a sequence. Let's place our first trigger in channel 1, Euclidean Circles channel 1, which is a 16-step sequence. You can see the steps, 16 steps in that ring. Channel 1 is triggering the graphic VCO, which is in drum mode and is making this uh, FM low tom sound. So I have two steps, or you can say that I have a fill count of two in the 16 step pattern. As I turn the fill knob towards the right, I'm adding a trigger. And if you look, all triggers are placed as evenly as possible. Channel 2 is uh, triggering drips, the high-pitched sine waves. So in this manner, I'm just turning the knobs clockwise, adding triggers, increasing the fill count. So just by turning a knob clockwise on each channel, I can create new grooves straight away. So I'm just going to keep turning until I get a fill count of 16 and in a 16 step sequence that's a trigger at every step. So now we're going to talk about the next very important parameter of Euclidean rhythms and that's changing the step length of the sequence. I'm just going to add two triggers, a fill count of two and I'm going to push the knob inside, lights blue and by turning it Counterclockwise, I can make the step length of the sequence smaller. So this is a uh, two, four, six, seven steps. This is a seven step sequence. And I'm gonna push the knob again and it lights purple. So now I can offset the sequence to the right. The top LED that's uh, lit purple is step one of the sequence. So let's add a timing reference. Let's add a kick drum from Future Retro, which is going to be triggered by channel one of uh, Launch Codes. Let's add uh, an offbeat hat, channel two on Launch Codes, which is uh, 
white noise coming from lucky voltages from radical frequencies. Okay, let's play with uh, channel 2 on Euclidean circles, which is triggering drips. And let's keep adding fills. This has a bossa nova feel to it. So let's layer drips with the kick and push the knob inside so it lights purple and now we're offsetting the sequence on drips layer it on the offbeat and it's back on the kick if I push the knob again it goes blue so I can edit the step length of the sequence and the thing to bear in mind with Euclidean circles is that when you have a certain amount of triggers a certain fill count let's say you have um, six steps enabled when you make the sequence shorter, it's going to try and fit those six steps within the new step length that you're going to program for the sequence. So this is a five step sequence and I have a five step CV sequence programmed in voltage block, which I just unmuted. So you can hear different pitches on drips. I edit the FM amount on the low tom sound on the graphic VCO, which remember is triggered by channel 1 on Euclidean circles. Adding more triggers on channel 2 that are triggering drips. Let's have some snares. The first trigger on channel 3 for the snare, which is uh, micro braids, is on step 5 and step 13. I've previously offset this channel so upon placing the first trigger it would go on step 5 and upon placing the second trigger it would go on step 13 initially it would be like so so the first trigger would go on a step 1 and step 9 but I want to be on the on the 2 and the 4 I want the snare to be on the 2 and the 4 and uh, let's play some more triggers. So hopefully so far you can see that using Euclidean circles is a very quick and easy way of getting uh, different beats uh, juxtaposed on each channel. And uh, basically you can't go wrong. This is the good thing about the uh, Euclidean sequencers. You just edit the step length, the fill count. You can quickly add fills make snare rolls or quickly remove fills so let's try let's make the snare the step sequence of the snare so the seven steps which is the same step count for the sequence that's triggering the bass line on the graphic VCO the low tom sound The bass line is from the graphic VCO, it's a low tom sound, it's a slow drum, FM drum sound. I'm just changing the tuning interval on the internal modulator oscillator. FM on the graphic VCO is like an effect. You select the waveform of the internal oscillator that's modulating the carrier and uh, play with the waveform and the tuning interval and to quickly obtain uh, different results very easily. If I go back and edit channel 1 on Euclidean circles which is triggering the baseline, graphic VCO like I said before. Go to eight steps, which is a more straightforward pattern. But the most interesting part, in my opinion, of using Euclidean rhythms is having the different channels set to different sequence step lengths, especially odd numbers, and how the channels that have a smaller step count roll into another channel that has a higher step count and as the beats progress there is a new groove 
that is interwoven from the different channels being juxtaposed onto each other. So to recap, Euclidean sequences are mainly about two things. The step length of the sequence and the fill count, meaning the number of triggers that you're going to place in that sequence. This is a technique that's uh, used a lot in techno. Speaking of techno, let's make a breakdown. Uh, knob 2 on Future Retro is uh, assigned to be a high pass. So Euclidean rhythms are very handy in styles that involve uh, a small track count and you're trying to make something interesting out of uh, very few elements. Polymeters are uh, widely used. Euclidean sequences are very handy for uh, techno music as well. So this was uh, Euclidean circles and Euclidean sequences. I hope you learned something from this video and I'll see you at the next one. Cheers.